Hello and welcome to the third and final installment of our Overseer's House mini-series. In our last video, Noah discussed the lives of the regular overseers at Somerset Place. But Josiah Collins III also employed under-overseers who acted as their deputies. It appears that he continued this practice from his father. We have records of four under-overseers who worked at Somerset Place and lived with their families in one or two rooms of the overseer's house. The third recorded under-overseer, William Newberry, was present at the mill yard on February 2, 1843, when it was discovered that Edward and Hugh Collins and their enslaved playmates, Anderson and Zacharias, had drowned in the transportation canal. Neighbor William Pettigrew wrote that Newberry, quote, immediately had the mill gate shut in order to prevent the bodies passing through them. There not being sufficient force to close the lake gates. They remained open until men came from the field. While this was happening, overseer Joseph Newberry was in the fields with Josiah, who gathered enough enslaved people to close the water gates so that the bodies could be safely removed. Later, William Newberry accompanied the funeral, funeral procession for the Collins boys on its way to Edenton, riding in front on horseback as far as Skinnersville. He remained employed at Somerset Place until the following year. The last recorded under-overseer was George Spruill, who worked during the Civil War from 1862 to 1864. We discussed in our last video how overseer Lloyd Bateman accompanied the 171 enslaved people sent to Hurry Scurry, but there were also 63 enslaved persons left behind at Somerset. The Collins family had fled to Hillsboro earlier in 1862, leaving the minister George Patterson in charge with Sproul as the overseer. However, Patterson joined the Confederate Army in early 1863, and Sproul struggled to keep the farming operation going because Union visits encouraged the enslaved people to pursue their freedom. Eventually, Sproul could only coerce the enslaved people to stay at Somerset Place, writing to Josiah in May of 1863 that, quote, they have been taken out of my control. He used, quote, every scheme to keep them here by giving, quote, hogs and cattle to each family. But he also documented that, quote, I cannot say a word. When the enslaved people took what they wanted and he risked trouble for himself if he so much as bothered them. By the time the Collins family returned to the plantation after the war ended, Spruill had left. Unfortunately, like many of the lost buildings at Somerset Place, we know little about the house where Spruill and the other overseers lived. The first house or houses for overseers were built by enslaved and free artisans in the early years of the late company, but it's unknown where they were located or when the housing along the street was built. The overseer's house on the street first appeared in the 1839 inventory, which lists simple and sparse furnishings, including three bedroom suites, various bed frames and cots, chairs, tables, and tableware. But the location of this home is significant and strategic because from the front porch, the overseers could watch the backyards of the slave dwellings along the lake and determine if anyone trespassed into the owner's compound. They could also monitor the meat rations building and the stockade used to confine enslaved people, both of which were located in front of the house. During the Civil War, the Collinses hid silver in the overseer's house when they fled to Hillsboro. The house itself remained occupied after the war, with an 1885 resident recalling later that it was used as a tenant house at that time. However, the structure was gone by 1943 when officials with Pettigrew State Park documented its location. William Tarleton excavated the structure in 1952 as part of his archaeological work and discovered the foundation was intact. You can see a portion of the exposed foundation in this photo negative. He concluded that the house was 20 by 32 feet with a 10 foot porch across the front and documented that it, quote, was a story and a half building of four rooms with a gambrel roof, a large chimney on the east end, and a shed porch on the front side, two doors open from the porch to the interior. 
Tarleton also heard testimonial evidence that indicated the existence of a detached kitchen likely built by post-war residents. It stood about 50 feet off the northwest corner of the house. Based on his research, Pettigrew State Park reconstructed the overseer's house to be a residence for the park superintendent. It was completed in March of 1955, but unlike the other reconstructed buildings on our site, this house is conjectural and has a 1950s interior layout. Today, this structure contains our research room and other storage space. Please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest uploads. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.